My first guest tonight is Josh Frydenberg. Welcome and, well, congratulations. You've now officially, I think, ish won the election. Well, congratulations to the Prime Minister and, and to the party. And it's, uh, I think it's very decent that, uh, that Bill Shorten has now conceded uh, the result. Uh, and we're still waiting, obviously, to see final uh, figures for a, for a number of seats. But uh, it does look very positive and, and the 76 looks likely. So what lessons have you learned? Because, of course, yes, a win is a win, and I said that earlier in the editorial. I mean, uh, you, you want to be winning if you're running rather than not winning. Mm. But you have had a huge defeat in some way. I mean, you've lost a lot of seats. You've been waiting for a week to see if you'll form government. What are the lessons? Well, I think the first thing to say is I do think that the Prime Minister has campaigned well. And you're right, we have lost seats. Uh, and we will have a majority. Uh, it could be one, it could be two seats. But if you think back to 1961, Menzies had a majority of one when he defeated Arthur Corwell, went on to govern for another five years as Prime Minister. John Howard had a bigger swing against him than we've had now in 1998. And obviously he went on to govern for a number of years after that. So the, the test now is for Malcolm Turnbull and our, our team to make the parliament work, which it, which is our desire. Okay, but, it, but what are the lessons? What have you done wrong? You've got to, you've got well, to be pretty honest about that. I think the, pro I think the Prime Minister stage. alluded to a few things today in his press conference, namely those text messages that went out was obviously he was talking about Medi-Scare and the, and the fact that they do need uh, to be authorised and we do need to deal with the new communications. And we got outplayed, if you like, uh, by an outright lie and obviously the police are looking into that. But also those parallel... Uh, support movements, the get-ups, and in my case, the Australian Conservation Foundation, who are on all the booths and took out half-page advertisements and hired trucks to drive around my electorate, basically campaigning for another candidate. Uh, we need to take that on, uh, take that on, and w what means we use, we'll, we'll, f we'll find out. But obviously, some in my party have been talking about setting up their own uh, support base. And do you base. support them? I, I think that's a good idea, and obviously, that would need to be a broad-based centre-right group. But if there is an uh, endorsement of our policies that come not from the Liberal Party but from another group. Uh, that can only be helpful, I think, to our cause. Then there's other issues at a, a substantive policy level, and the Prime Minister's also talked about okay, Medicare so, and health. And a so few do other you think things. the health policy needs major reform, major change? Well, I think we've got a very good story to tell in health, Patricia. But that, see, that's what. I wonder, are you just saying the messaging is wrong on health or well, do you fundamentally acknowledge that perhaps the policy has problems? I mean, well, the freeze on the, on the rebate, clearly that is well, hurting. Let, let's, let's, take the, let's take the issues uh, uh, one by one. In terms of the freeze, that came in under the Labor Party, as you know. Now, we extended it and obviously there were budget issues, but we put additional money into other areas of health, the $2.9 billion into public hospitals. We've tripled the number of drugs that are now listed on the PBS that, than were under the Labor Party. We have seen bulk billing rates go up from an average of 79% under Labor to 85% under us. Indeed, under Labor, they were spending $17 billion a year under Medicare. It's now $23 billion But, but with us. respect, Josh, you're just telling me the things you're but thinking you're doing well. They're facts. OK, but the, the public has just said they're dissatisfied with your health policy. Yes. So you telling me the facts well, doesn't do much, well, does I think it? If you, well, I, I disagree, because if you put those facts... But you did, we, and no-one listened did, on but, that. But I suppose as a party, we have to look at how do we do that in a more effective manner. Because so you think it's all about communications, not the substance? I think a commu the communications is a very big part of it. Because so whose fault is that? You said the Prime Minister campaigned well. Yes. Why didn't you get well, the health I, message out? Why as, were people so well, angry? As we know, we had to deal with an outright lie. And that was very diffi difficult to counter, particularly when a text message went out to millions of people saying it came from a Commonwealth agency. OK, so let's be clear. Election. Do you think your health policy is, is absolutely uh, perfect, look, needs no change? Well, I think there are a lot of very, very strong aspects of our health policy that will be continued to be promoted by Susan Lee and the rest of the, the Cabinet as well. But do you think it needs any change? Well, those sort of issues are for debates internally within the Cabinet or Ministry or indeed the party room, but I do think we have a fantastic story to tell on health. OK. With respect, all of the problems you've outlined in terms of your campaign seem to be uh, Labor ran a scary campaign, it was all Labor, Labor, Labor. What did your side do wrong? Because you seem to have lost a lot of support among voters too. So you must have done something wrong. Well, I mean... Hang on. We've actually won the election and the Labor Just. Party... Well, we've won the election and that's important. We are going to form government. 
Now, Labor got its second lowest primary vote since 1934. In fact, Bill Shorten did worse than Mark Latham. And there's been eight elections since 1996, and the Labor Party's only won one of those in their own right. So I, I think when you're comparing two horse races, you've got to look at their performance as well yeah, as... Yeah, but ours. I'm asking you about yours. I'll ask Sam Dastyari about theirs, <laughs> but your job is to answer it about yours. And, and what was the biggest problem of your campaign? The biggest problem, I think... On the, at, at a grassroots that, that level? That doesn't blame Labor. Your side, yeah, as, your as, responsibility. As, as, well, everything in a two-horse race, you've got to look at who the other horse is. But when you're talking about the grassroots campaigns, clearly, in those three seats in Tasmania, for example, which I, for one, didn't think we were going to lose because we've got excellent members there and we'd won them quite convincingly at the 2013 election, we were caught by surprise by those gra the effectiveness of those grassroots campaign and the Medicare campaign. Now... There's a lot we can do uh, on the policy side that we will do going forward. There's a lot we can do on the process side. But Malcolm Turnbull made a very decisive and, you'd have to say, good decision to run a positive campaign. So you don't think it should have been more negative? Because a lot of critics on your side of politics have said it wasn't negative enough well, and that that was part of the problem. I think the, the issues that he promoted about how we uh, move and transition as an economy uh, from the mining boom... Uh, into this new economy with innovation and high-tech skills and communication technology. I think that's the right message. In terms of whether we could have, you know, also had some negative stuff on Bill Shorten and his union history, no doubt that that so could have been So you think that should have been a well, bigger part of the well, campaign? I, I think the Prime Minister even today, again, has, has talked about Bill Shorten and the union movement and how they're an extension of the Labor Party. Then are so, you disappointed that we didn't hear more about that during the campaign then? Well, we're all geniuses with hindsight, Patricia. Well, so. I'm asking you to tell me what you think well, with hindsight. I, we know it's with hindsight Well, look, now. there will be a comprehensive uh, review of the election, as there was in the campaign, as there was after the previous elections. No doubt the party will choose somebody uh, who is senior and experienced to do that. And their questions for them uh, to do it in the cold light of day rather than for me... Uh, to do that on the run tonight. Should Conservatives be brought in now with that there's going to have to be a reshuffle with Ministers obviously losing their seats, more Conservatives brought in to the, the Ministry? Well, those... Again, I know they're someone else's decisions, but what are, do you, well, you think? Well, I, I do think there'll be some new faces. And I'm sure... Should they be and I'm sure brought in from the Conservative uh, wing? Well, I, I'm sure they'll, they'll have those sort of backgrounds as, as well as people with other types of backgrounds. But the... The way the party has worked best, uh, if you look at those golden years of John Howard, he did straddle, you know, the John Stuart Mill small L liberals with his, in his team and people talk about the Amanda Vanstones and the Robert Hills, indeed the Richard Alstons of the world, but also the harder... Uh, capital C Conservatives okay. like the Nick Minchins, Alexander... And Dallas. another good example of a capital C Conservative is Tony Abbott. Uh, he was the Prime Minister, a lot of political skill. Shouldn't he be brought back in? Well, if you ask me, will he be brought back in? No, I didn't ask will, should, was well, my question. Well, again, it's not my choice, but I think we've got a cabinet that's working very effectively and there's but a lot of Do you think it's a waste of his political skill to see him sitting on the backbench? Well, I'm sure both Malcolm Turnbull and Tony Abbott will continue to have those discussions uh, about uh, the role of Tony uh, and uh, in the parliament. But, you know, Tony himself, Patricia, has made it very clear... He's there to promote the conservative values that he holds dear and, and therefore he plays an important role in our party. Arthur Sinodinus was on the ABC this morning and talked about this mandate yep. uh, that you have. Isn't your mandate diminished significantly by this result? No, we have a mandate. And to do what? We have a mandate to implement the policies we took. Whether so do it was you the accept budget, though... Whether it was the tax cuts, uh, whether it's the innovation policy, there are mandates. So do you accept, though, that some of those policies will have to be altered quite dramatically, particularly the tax cuts? I mean, it looks to me that that Senate is very unlikely to pass your tax cuts as they stand. Well, as you know, uh, we've worked quite effectively in previous uh, governments with the, with the Senate when we haven't held a minority... Uh, in fact, only, I think, three governments have held a majority in both Houses of Parliament since the war. Menzies held it briefly, uh, Fraser held it briefly, and John Howard uh, held it briefly with majorities in both Houses. So governments tend to have to negotiate uh, in the Senate to get their legislation through. Now, 
We did in the last parliament, would you dare I say it, with the Greens on the multinational tax agenda, with the crossbenchers on the temporary protection visas and with the Labor Party on the fuel excise. So we've done it in the past and I think there'll be a lot of horse trading. OK, so there'll be horse trading. You accept that they, you might have to change some of your policies, obviously, well, given this election a, I result. I don't have a crystal ball, but whenever two parties get to the table, no doubt they'll each have different demands. OK, superannuation reform. Peter Dutton saying, you know, it's going to have to change. <laughs> Peter Dutton saying it. He is a minister. He is a minister, a valued colleague and a, and a good friend. And what do you think? But, but I thought, well, again, um, that was part of our ma mandate that we got at the last election. Now, of course, there were differing views uh, about that particular policy, but that was our budget, that was our mandate. We won and now we'll go forward. Do you accept, though, that uh, the majority of your party room thinks that that policy stinks? No, I don't accept that. How many do think it stinks? You know, I, they've been calling you. You know. I don't know. I haven't, ta I haven't taken. I haven't taken a. You haven't uh, taken any calls on the superannuation policy, saying that it's well, a problematic I mean, policy. I, I'm, I'm a member of the parliament, Patricia, and I take constituents' calls on a whole manner of issues. But if you go back to the rationale for those changes to superannuation, it was based on the Murray review. The Murray Review was the first financial system inquiry since the Wallace one 20 years before, and it found that superannuation need to go, needed to go back to its original purpose, to be a substitute or a supplement to the age pension. And right now, it's not sustainable. So I think there were community expectations... Sure, but the retrospectivity of the changes the is really one of the very contentious but as parts. You, but as you know, we've always said that uh, it's not retrospective. But, well, that is very much contested, though. Well... People have differing views. In, in fact, many people in your own party room contest that it's not well, retrospective. Get, get, get them on here and tell you Oh, that. I can't wait till I do. And I think a lot <laughs> of them want to go on the record now that finally the result is settled. Do you, do you at least predict a very robust party room meeting on the superannuation changes? Look, I don't know what, what people are going to say in the confines of the party room, but that is the best place to say it. All right, being very circumspect there. Um, on the Nationals deal, I mean, you always do mm -hmm. a deal with the Nationals about, you know, what's in, what's out, how it's all going to work. It's a coalition. Yeah, that's correct. It is a coalition. Uh, that, I understand, is going to be a secret deal. A lot of people are very upset about that. Labor making uh, an argument today that it's outrageous that it's secret. It seems to be, given, you know, you're going into government together and the public elect you, that perhaps we should know what's in that deal, shouldn't we? I think it's a bit rich of the Labor Party, Patricia, to talk about secret deals with partners. I mean, they're basically funded by the union movement. Their okay. policy but is dictated by the union movement. I'm not asking about the Labor Party. But, I mean, but you I'm just quoted you. them. You just quoted okay, them. OK, I'll quote me. myself. Yes. Will you be able to tell me details of what's in that secret deal? I'd <laughs> like to know too. Look, there are issues for Barnaby Joyce and for Malcolm Turnbull. But the, part, the coalition uh, of both the Nationals and the Liberal Party has been you know, a great asset for both of us. It's actually brought us into government from the days of Menzies and Blackjack. But do you think it should be a transparent deal? That's my question. Well, I, you know, I'm sure the relevant people know the relevant facts. But but the relevant people are the voters, aren't they? Well, people well, who elect you. They know that they, when they voted for the National Party, they got somebody who was going to be in coalition with the Liberal Party. They knew that. That's why they voted for them. Malcolm Turnbull has just stared down the barrel of electoral death. Do you think this will change him significantly? I think it was a reality check for all of us. And, you know, Malcolm Turnbull has been the first uh, to say that he takes responsibility for the campaign. There are a lot of lessons to be learnt uh, and that we will now internalise those lessons, do our proper review, but we look forward to governing for the best interests of the whole country, those who voted for us and those who didn't. And just before I let you go, there's been a story this weekend about uh, a leak from the office that you uh, worked in, Alexander Downer's office, during the Iraq war. This is, of course, before you entered Parliament. There was some talk that you had leaked the secret report to a journalist that actually works on this network, <laughs> Andrew Bolt. Uh, I know you've been asked about it, but not, I, I understand, on camera. You know, I, do you I... put your hand on your heart and say you didn't, you didn't leak that report? Hand on my heart, I didn't leak the report. OK, well, there you go. There you go. Settled that. So many but, people but want to be able to that. Can I just say, Patricia, this is grubby politics by the Labor Party. You know, Andrew Lee for a whole year has been fighting for the release of a report that when it was released, it backfired into his own face. Thanks for coming in. Great to be we'll with We'll be you. talking again and you will remain a minister now. Looking forward to it. Thanks, Patricia. Thank you. And that's John